Glycolysis is the process by which we transform glucose into pyruvate molecules and other types of molecules such as ATP, NADH, water and H plus ions. Now, glycolysis takes place in the cytosol of the cell, in the fluid portion of the cytoplasm of the cell. And glycolysis is an anaerobic process, which means it takes place in the presence or in the absence of oxygen. So, for one glucose that basically is broken down in glycolysis, we produce two pyruvate molecules as shown in this region. Now, once these pyruvates are formed, they are present in the cytosol. And if we have oxygen present in the cell, the cell can basically undergo a process known as cellular respiration. So if the cell contains oxygen and it commits to cellular respiration, these two pyruvate molecules are then transported into the mitochondria mitochondrial matrix of the mitochondrion inside that cell. So let's say this is the cytoplasm of the cell. This is the mitochondrion which contains the outer membrane, the inner membrane, we have the intermembrane space, and we have the mitochondrial space. Now if our cell commits to cellular respiration in the presence of oxygen, these two pyruvates are transported via specialized proteins known as integral proteins. So we have integral proteins on the outer membrane and integral proteins on the inner membrane shown in green. And these pyruvates are basically transported via these membranes into the mitochondrial matrix of this mitochondrion found inside that cell. Now, once our pyruvate molecules are inside the mitochondrial matrix, they will undergo a process known as oxidative decarboxylation. And this process is known as pyruvate decarboxylation. So basically, three enzymes join together to form an enzyme complex known as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And what this complex basically does is it takes the pyruvate pyruvate, it uses two cofactors, one NAD plus and one coenzyme A or simply CoA to transform the pyruvate into acetyl coenzyme A. So basically, the pyruvate is decarboxylated to produce our CO2, the carbon dioxide, and then the remaining two carbon molecule mixes with the coenzyme A to produce acetyl coenzyme A. And we also reduce our NAD into NADH and we form the H ion. So basically, the these are the products and these are the reactants of the pyruvate decarboxylation process that takes place within the mitochondrial matrix. Now, because we form two pyruvate molecules, when we break down one glucose, these two pyruvate molecules will both be, will both undergo the decarboxylation reaction. And so this reaction will take place twice per a single glucose molecule. So actually the products are these products multiplied by two. So we have two acetyl coenzymes A, two CO2 molecules, two NADHs, and two H plus ions. Now, what exactly is the purpose of pyruvate decarboxylation? Well, basically it links, it connects the process of glycolysis and the citric acid cycle that also takes place within the mitochondrion, which we'll discuss in detail in the next lecture. So pyruvate decarboxylation is the link between glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, and it produces an important molecule known as acetyl coenzyme A that is used as the fuel source in the citric acid cycle. Now, one last point that I want to emphasize is the following. Now, pyruvate decarboxylation does not actually need oxygen to take place, meaning there's no oxygen in the reacting or the product portion of this pyruvate decarboxylation. But even though this reaction doesn't actually use oxygen directly, 
this pyruvate is only transported into the mitochondrial matrix if there is oxygen present in the cell. 